Caspers Neck Pass is a secondary gravel road in the vicinity of some of the famous attractions of the Low Felt, like the Blader River Canyon, Pilgrim's Rest, and Burke's Luck Potholes, a charming world of a bygone era loaded with pioneering history and tales of mining hardship. The pass has a long trekker history and was first built by Paul Kruger's father, Caspar Kruger, hence the name. The routing of this pass was actually very clever considering the time and evolution of our roads in South Africa and is generally a pleasant route with reasonable gradients, but there are a few sections which do get very steep, especially on the western side. Of further significance on this pass is that although the pass is a lengthy 12.2 kilometers, it only has 22 bends, corners and curves, and all of the sharpest bends, including the single hairpin, occur during the first 2.2 kilometers on the western side. The road follows a similar line to Robbers Pass, but about 20 kilometers further to the north. Starting on the western side, the road begins climbing into the southeast for 400 meters, then sweeps into a sharp left-hand bend of 120 degrees. If you look up directly to the right, a tall peak dominates the landscape. This is the Mabasponi mountain, which has a height of 1,857,4 meters. A small river, the Kigweti, is invisible to the right amongst the dense undergrowth. At this intersection, make sure that you keep going straight on the lesser traveled road. The hairpin bend that you've just driven through is the sharpest bend on the entire pass and occurs at the 0.9 km point. It's a nasty corner and often has ruts, washaways and corrugations. Once through the first hairpin, the heading reverses directly into the south for 400 meters, still climbing very steeply at 1 in 5. At the 1.2 km point, there's a 90 degree left hand bend, which has a tight arc, so slow down to 30 km per hour. Once through this bend, with the heading into the northeast, you're facing the steepest part of the pass for the next 600 meters, which brings the next sharp bend into view. At the 1.8 km point, there's a razor sharp right hand bend of 110 degrees, which forms the first part of an altitude gaining switchback where the second part of the switchback is a much more evenly radius left-hand bend, which reverts the heading back into the northeast. Only a short steep climb remains till the summit point of 1,406 meters is reached. Two minor tracks lead off to the right and left at the summit point. The right-hand road leads to the Kaspers Neck Farm, and if you have time, there's space to pull over here and savor the magnificent Lofel scenery. The first 400 meters of the descent remains very steep, but eases off after the 2.6 km point, which essentially marks the end of the more technical section of this pass. From here, the gradients ease off to around 1 in 20, whilst the road heads generally towards the east, with only minor turns, but don't be lulled into a false sense of security, as there are many sections along this part of the descent that get stony, rutted and rough. Always be aware that the road conditions can change rapidly and also choose your driving lines with care to avoid any sharp rocks and stones which could cut the sidewalls. Going back in history to 1843, Andres Potkiter, who had just founded Pochelström and on the advice of Louis Trichard, took a more southerly route into the unknown land of the northeast, which turned out to be virtually impassable, let alone arduous. After negotiating what is known today as Kaspers Neck Pass, the party reached the edge of the Drakensberg Escarpment, down which there was no possible descent at that point or by line of sight for 50 kilometers in either direction. Leaving the women and children and a few men outspanned on the banks of the river just below the top of the escarpment, with strict instructions that the waiting group return to Pochelström if the scouting group had not returned by a date two months into the future, the men went in search of a way down the Lofelt, 1,000 meters lower down. Access to the Lofelt was discovered to be via an animal track on land under control of a local chief named Coveni, hence the Afrikaans translation of Covain, and on into Delagoa Bay, where for various reasons the men were delayed. The rest of this important bit of South African history is narrated in part two of the Kaspersnake Pass.